Hey, what up, guys? Welcome back to the Golf Perfection Podcast. It has been a while, and I pretty much wanted to make a video to talk about how much money I make uh, being a D-less golf YouTuber, uh, talk about the scene itself, clear up some misconceptions, and then talk about, yeah, what it's like to make content for golf. Uh, I think that's a pretty interesting topic in itself, and I'm not going to clickbait you. I'm just going to tell you straight up. On average, I make about $120 to $140 a month just in the YouTube ad revenue alone. And that is the only source of income that I get from this channel. Yeah, it's all from YouTube and the, I guess, ad revenue that they give me uh, as a result of the views that I am able to get from from you guys, uh, for those who are watching. So thank you for watching. But Obviously, it's not my main source of income, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Now that that's out of the way, you know, 120, 140 a month. My best month was maybe like 190. That's because I had the Pebble Beach videos, and I made two Pebble Beach videos that got a lot of views. So it was probably specifically because of that. Yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. Don't want to like clickbait you and draw it out. That's pretty much the answer. So in terms of what I consider what is a D-list golf YouTuber. In my definition is pretty much if you were to ask a public forum or you know anyone on instagram or any like social media outlet like who is your favorite golf youtuber a d-list golf youtuber would not even make you know the light of day when asked that question so i commonly see a not commonly but i see a reddit uh, in the golf subreddit, I see a thread that pops up every once in a while, like who's your favorite golf content creator. Unfortunately, I never see my name on there or my channel on there, which is kind of a bummer. But yeah, a D-lister golf YouTube content creator won't see the light of day on those types of lists. That's what I am. And that's what I consider someone uh, in my, I guess, caliber of content creation making, which I don't mind calling myself that. Like I said, this is purely a pr passion project. A question that I'm always asking myself is like, if I'm able to make it my main source of income, would I do it? I'm still not sure. It's pretty hard to have your livelihood based upon, you know, views that you get from YouTube. Um, so yeah, that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. So now that I've kind of given you the definition or what my definition of what a D-list golf YouTuber a content creator is, I wanted to first go over some misconceptions. So firstly, it's just for me personally, like I don't ask or don't receive uh, many special privileges. Uh, and I'm basically like you, the viewer. Um, I'm just a person who really enjoys golf and I have a camera, but you know, the rounds that you're seeing are pretty much like weekend rounds. Very rarely do I get to play on a weekday where it's wide open and I'm in the Bay area. So there's a ton of tee times and I'm playing a normal round within the pace of play. Uh, amongst all of you, uh, and I'm just a normal person. So I just happen to have a camera, happen to be somewhat good at editing videos. And uh, that's, you know, I don't really ask the courses or brands for, you know, deals. Yeah, I pay for my lessons in full. I pay for all the golf equipment that you see. I don't take paid gigs. And since it's not my main source of income, I don't have to do that. And I kind of like that. It allows me to play what I want and buy what I want. And I'll have to think about, you know, oh, do I have to like in turn trade, you know, good words about a specific product for me to get some, you know, some income in exchange to help me get by. So I, 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 I don't do that. So that's kind of the first thing I want to clear up. Another thing that I want to clear up is like, I don't have a ton of free time and I don't re release like chronologically in a sense that if you see a video that being released, that doesn't mean I shot that video like a couple of days ago. Sometimes I film multiple rounds in a weekend. Uh, Palm Springs is a good example of that. And I release them one week at a time. So that doesn't mean like I played around, then shot it, edited it, and then released it a few days later. So for Palm Springs, I shot a bunch of videos and released them, you know, across a month and a half. Uh, so that's just kind of, you know, how it goes when you're not doing this full time. Uh, you can only shoot on weekends usually if you're lucky on a weekday or after work. But yeah. Chronologically, you may see me post like, hey, something on Instagram, like I'm at this golf course. And then the content on that golf course doesn't get released until like a month later. That's because I have a backlog of videos or something that I've already edited that happened, you know, prior to that. And yeah, things don't always come out chrono chronologically. And sometimes it doesn't make sense in a vacuum because, hey, like what the heck you posted this, but I saw Instagram story that you were at this golf course like two months ago, which probably is the case. Yeah, that being said, leading to this next topic, I don't do this as a full-time gig. 
Uh, I do enjoy doing this in my free time. It's what I'm focused on creating videos, you know, trying to get better at golf. I wish I was showing more improvement for the three and a half years that I have been making uh, golf YouTube videos. But yeah, I think I always ask myself, you know, in my head personally, like, would I want to do this full time if I had the opportunity? If I could get paid dollar for dollar for uh, exchanging this for the income I received from my, my, my full time job. I'd consider it. But the thing with um, golf YouTube or content creation is that you're really at the mercy of people watching your stuff and you can fall in and out of relevancy fairly quickly. Um, yeah, I just think about content creators who are able to, not not even in golf, but in any subject on YouTube who can do it for years and years on end. And I, and I find it very admirable that they're able to stay relevant. For me, like my content isn't even like high view getting anyway, you know, to even sustain what I'm sustaining right now is really difficult. And so I don't, I'd have to put more work and time to, you know, garner more views. And I don't know if I even have it in me or if I'm the correct if I'm the correct combination of things to even make this into a successful career. But yeah, I guess I think always think to myself, what would I do if I did this as a full-time thing? Of course, make more content, uh, probably create some sort of merge line, practice a lot more, and then publish different kinds of content. But that's the thing. It's kind of like YouTube channels and content creation are kind of this generation's like millennials and youngers. It's like their side hustle. But even younger people, I think like Gen Z, you know, like good, good age, that's like their full time gig. So we're kind of caught in this in between where we have maybe established jobs. And I'm just, this is a huge generalization. But yeah, this is like our side hustle. Our millennial side hustle is, you know, trying to do a small business or create content. So that's kind of how I see it right now. It's like my side hustle. Um, and if it becomes a full time thing, so be it. But not really f trying to force my way into making a full time thing. So another thing I want to clear up is like I don't have a lot of time to watch golf YouTube. Uh, golf YouTube is kind of one of those things that you can't easily watch in the background because you have to watch golf shots and stuff like that. Maybe some people are better at it than others of watching in the background. I watch different stuff on YouTube, like you know food stuff or tech stuff in the background, and I don't really like enjoy a ton of watching a ton of golf YouTube. Um, I kind of equate it to like a musician always listening to their own type of music kind of thing, or or maybe a chef who comes home and doesn't want to eat their certain type of cuisine that they cook uh, in their job. I, I Maybe I kind of equate it a little bit like that. So I only keep up with Not A Scratch Golfer, what he's doing, because he's a friend. Um, and then I watch some people who are local, you know, who, you know, I've chatted with on online. I watch some other content, see what they're doing, but I don't really keep up with you know, the, all the in-betweens of the big moments of the big channels, like good, good, or, or Rick Shields and stuff like that. So, so after clearing up all the, I guess, misconceptions, you know, I kind of wanted to get into like what it's actually like. And to be honest, it's a total grind, like being a YouTube creator or being a golf content creator is a total grind. I do enjoy it, but it requires a ton of balance. And sometimes I'm not the best at this, but yeah, be you able know, balance with life, with friends, with my, you know, with my wife and with my family. Um, it takes a lot of time to film edit and the last leg, like the thumbnail and the voiceovers of videos is probably like the ones that, that is probably like the, one of the most important things, but the things, the thing I like doing the least is making a thumbnail for YouTube and then doing the voiceovers. I'm not the best storyteller. I think Adam from not a scratch golfer is a fantastic storyteller, but he puts a lot of effort into his, uh, his voiceovers. But when I'm doing it, I'm just like recording, 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 deleting, recording, and it, it, it's a grind. Yeah. And I'm trying to be efficient with time spent with, you know, family or going on vacation. I will film maybe a video at a golf course, but then the rest of the time, I don't want to be filming, you know, every day for the channel and getting content. I want to be spending time with my family. Right. So I'm, I, I set aside some time for the channel to play a golf round if I go out, but then the rest will be dedicated to, you know, you know, what the purpose of the trip is. So that, 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 I don't know if that made sense, but that's kind of how I see it right now. So there are some trips where I go abroad where I don't even focus on golf at all. But I guess if I did this as a full-time job, I could take trips or, you know, I could take, I could take work dedicated trips uh, that I can, you know, hammer out a ton of videos. But until then, that's kind of what it is. It's total grind. Um, but it does come with its bros. It's super fun. And I feel like the connections that I made are like the best thing about all of this. So, so if you're not a part of the discord, I say you should join it pretty much. If you ask me on Instagram for tea time, you know, 
and we can play together. I'll respond, but it's kind of hard. Your best bet is to join the Discord and then follow the Tea Time Partners channel. And I'll post in there on occasion, like, hey, I have a free spot in a group. And if you want to join, you can join. It's very hard for me to, because I don't do this as a full time thing, to carve out, you know, rounds with people, with people I don't know. Because if, say, that per- I'm not saying like I've met any crazy people, but say, like, I meet up with someone, we, we you know, want to play golf, and I just can't film that day for whatever reason. Maybe the group vibe isn't there or, um, or whatever I like lose that whole entire day. So golf, you know, it takes a long time. It's like a, it's a four hour to five hour thing a six hour thing with traveling back and forth. And if I go and meet someone and play golf with them and then the video doesn't turn out for whatever reason, that means I like lost an entire day. I lost that week's, uh, you know, content and then I have to start over. So basically I kind of like to control, not control, but know who's in my group. So I invite people who know what it's like to play with a you know golf YouTuber like myself. And I don't slow people down at all. That's probably another misconception I should clear up. I play just as fast filming than I do not filming. Um, but I know some other YouTubers maybe aren't the same. But moral of the story is join the Discord if you want to play. That's how I set up tea times with people and viewers. All right, so other parts of being a content creator for golf specifically is like the anxiety of falling behind. So yeah, like I know all content creators, we like to... We like to look upwards uh, to others who are either have a higher subscriber count or have more views and see what they're doing and aspire to be those people. And yeah, like I see a lot of like great content creators come out and I can only help and think like, dang, I should get back to work or get back to the grind so I can keep up or try to keep growing. Um, there's definitely content creators who started out really small and have seen huge success. And um, yeah, I think for me, for being a D-list golf content creator, my main thing, my main, I guess, jealousy or envy comes to those who get access to specifically like LPGA players. I really enjoy the LPGA. I've always been a fan even before I started doing golf content. Um, yeah, and I would just like to make content with LPGA players. I think that would be the coolest thing. That's kind of, and that's one goal I aspire to. It's to make content with LPGA or Epson Tour or, you know, or development tours for the LPGA. That's something that I want to do. So... Yeah, talking about goals for the channel, you know, for me, it's just keep on creating content and try not to burn out and keep enjoying it. Obviously, get more subs, but yeah, like I said, I want to feature more people in the community as well. And then obviously, if I can have an opportunity to, you know, make some beneficial content for the LPG, I would like to do that as well. Another goal is maybe to get better to where I can play in a tournament. Uh, right now, the game is pretty rough. Um, my I was playing my best pretty much during like covid uh, and uh, when I was playing every weekend, you know, there's something about just playing every weekend that your game is just more spot on. You're hitting more shots, you're playing more, you're being more consistent. That's when I was playing my best golf. And it's been a while because, you know, right now it's been raining so much that I don't have time to play on the weekends. And like I said earlier, I'm just a normal dude. And if I can't play during the weekends, I can hardly play during the week because I have work. So, so like I said, I'm kind of uh, a reflection of the average golfer, nine to five guy who has only time to play on weekends and who can practice on occasion. So I hope that rings true through my channel. So one thing I wanted to touch on is like, I don't really like challenges like break 80 challenges or break, you know, break 40 challenges on nine holes because uh, new f- newsflash golf is hard. And uh, I mean, there's so many people who try to do it. Like Peter Finch tries to make the open and you know, that would be incredible if he did, but he never got into it. Or Mr. Short Game tries to make this, the champions tour never worked out or, I think, I mean, Steve from Good Good is not the best example, but he also put up a challenge where, like, he would try to break some scoring threshold. Trent from, uh, you know, for foreplay, trying to break, what is it, 90? Yeah. People like to see progression in videos, and golf is one of those things that you can't just, like, you know, try it over and over again without practice, and you're not going to see results if you don't put the time in. Basically, from what I've seen, all golfers, ex- exception for a few, they're already really good at golf. All, all golf content creators are really already good at golf. And so they make it seem so much easier than it is for sure. Um, but yeah, I just happen to be not that great at golf. I'm, I'm okay. I wouldn't even say I'm good at golf. I'm okay. But to where the f- point where filming doesn't make me that much worse. So it's palatable in my opinion. So 
that's that. All right, last thing I wanted to touch on before going to some questions from my Discord is talk about the golf content creation scene. Uh, me personally, I think right now it's a little stale. Uh, but there have been some newcomers that have been coming out with some great stuff. Like Luke Kwan just announced that he's going to break out from Good Good. Um, so that's something to look forward to. But yeah, pretty much how I see it is that all golf content creation trends to just being Good Good. So everyone, you know, starts out like me, you know, do shot tracers on videos, try to make it their own. But then they get a second shooter learn how to do the shot tracers that good good does and then they use a camcorder with a lot of zoom to zoom in on shots and make shot tracers like all, all golf channels pretty much aspire to do that and you know it's a it's a it's a formula pioneered by good good but it's a almost a little bit of a tired formula to where yeah now like these big guys i feel like they're struggling to figure out what how to sustain like numbers and viewership um so that's why new faces on the scene are taking advantage of, I guess, kind of an exhausted or, uh, yeah, an exhausted viewership base. So those who were watching Good Good all the time, and I really enjoyed watching Good Good back in the day, they're going to people like Quan. You know, there are a few pillars that that are in all channels. One is the personality. Uh, the next is the, I guess, the subject, like the location or a challenge or the reason for the video. And then lastly is the talent level. So it's kind of a mix of those three that kind of gives you the formula of whether or not your channel will take off. So we'll just use uh, Luke Kwan, for example. His personality is pretty fun. Uh, he's grown on camera quite a bit, has become really comfortable. And he was a content creator previous to being on Good Good, but everyone's kind of just gotten to know him and people really like his personality. He has New Zealand as his subject, so a ton of beautiful courses out there. And then the talent level, obviously, he's super, he's super good, uh, and uh, yeah, it just makes it very watchable because you can focus on his personality. And he's going to play good golf, but I don't know if I would necessarily watch it for for golf. Golf isn't the most interesting thing for me to watch on television, unless something insane happens. Um, but yeah, even the best of golfers, you know, something insane happening to them is not likely all the time. So. Yeah, that's kind of like the three pillars. I guess a fourth pillar would be your execution or quality of the product. But yeah, um, everyone's kind of doing the same thing. Everyone's trending to try to be the next good good with the shot tracers and then the zooms on the camcorders. And it's a little bit of a tired formula. So if you can find a way to shake that up, find your own niche and you know, think, hey, if you have the personality, uh, figure out a cool subject that you want to post about and keep up with the repetitions, then I'd say go for it. But it's it's really tough. So yeah, that's kind of how I see the scene. Everyone's still trying to get to YouTube. I started in YouTube, but a lot of IG or TikTok-based people, one in particular, his name's, I think, Ben, is it Ben Krupper? I think he has got the pause in his swing. Very watchable swing. He is the master of the short form, but is also transferring now to a YouTube long form very successfully but yeah he has the talent the personality and his swing his unique niche is his swing um so another person is melosi golf uh i think he's really cool he's like samoan um <laughs> and he's got a pretty cool swing but he's also tra transferring from instagram to youtube but it, it's tough it's saturated out there so uh, all the best to those guys all right last up here is discord questions like i said join the discord it's a lot of fun it's a fun community uh, and yeah, we're just always having a good time and just discussing people come and go, but I'll still be there. And, uh, yeah, if you join it, it'll be a good time. Who are your top three PGA live golfers you would take a lesson from and play a nine hole round with take a lesson from, uh, I'd probably take a lesson from Bryson cause he uses one length and I use one length as well. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know. I think I would just play nine holes with Bryson and take a lesson from him. I know there's a bunch of other low hanging fruits, but I, I just for me I'm just a fan I, I'm a fan because he's from the Central Valley and I'm also from the Central Valley and we actually had the same swing coach back in the day obviously I didn't turn out like he did um, but um, yeah he doesn't probably even remember me or anything but he would be around when I was taking the lessons uh, so I'm just a big fan of his although he is very polarizing uh, in the golf media world so other PGA live players I'm a fan of that I would like to, you know, play golf with is Tony Finau. Um, Tony Finau is an awesome, he just seems like a super nice person. So yeah, I, I, I would try to, you know, play with him. 
and I would switch this to question to say LPGA. There's a ton of LPGA players I would like to play with, like Daniel King, Lydia Ko. Angel Yin seems hilarious. Um, a lot of Asians, <laughs> Asians represent, you know, represent. I'm Asian, so I like supporting the Asian players as well. But yeah, I would probably have a lot longer list for LPGA players than PGA live golf players. All right, Alan here asks, which monkey Paul golf scenarios would you rather experience? One, you always hit driver too high and get no distance, but always one putt everything. Two, hit driver middle of the fairway every time, anytime, but thin every wedge shot over the green. I kind of already do that. Three, driver and irons are pure, but three putt every single time. Wedges are 50-50, sometimes good, sometimes maybe shite. <laughs> well, I'd probably take number one to one putt everything because that would be insane. Just get on the green and one putt. That would be pretty cool. Top five Bay Area golf courses I have not played. So I actually have played most, if not all, Bay Area courses, except for some in San Francisco. Lincoln Park and Tilden, but one of them is closing. So other than that, I haven't played Moffitt, and I haven't played um, most of the privates. I don't really count those. And then I probably have to expand out further to, like, like Napa, Chardonnay, and the courses in that area. Or then I want to play Yoka, Yoka Dehi or Dehi, Yoka Dehi. I really need to get out to there. So those, I pretty much played them all in the Bay Area. So yeah, I'm running out of, like I said, the subject in my videos, I'm running out. That's why I started like other branches of content, like kind of like club playing reviews or G triple P's. So yeah, always thinking of what to expand into. All right, so another question from Mike. If you could play any course in the world with any single other golf YouTuber personality, who and where? So this is probably cheating because he's technically a pro, but Bryson would be really fun to play with. Well, I don't know if I would have anything con to contribute. So I'll probably say like Luke Kwan because he's Asian and he's probably the most prolific Asian content creator right now, other than maybe Taco Golf, but I think Luke Kwan's a little bit more relatable. So I'd play somewhere with Luke Kwan and probably somewhere in his home turf in New Zealand. All right, and the last question was, this is an interesting one. What made you decide you wanted to try sharing your golf and create content for social media? What have been some low and high moments for you? Okay, so why I decided to make content from golf? Uh, so if you didn't know, I did make content for, I used to have a Fiesta ST, uh, the car I would track it at like Laguna Seca and like Thunder Hill. So I was always in the content creation like mode or scene but nothing would really stick for me on a consistent basis. And with golf, I felt like there was an opportunity to kind of make my own and, and post on a regular basis. So I just thought, screw it, why not? So actually my wife chipped in for half of a gift for me to buy an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I used that as my video camera for the longest time to start the channel. And I thought to myself, this will kind of be my last hurrah to kind of keep up being a content creator for you know my own passion on the side and to see where it goes and it ended up taking off and getting to levels to where I thought I, I thought I could never achieve and you know there's still a lot, I wish it was you know a lot bigger than it was but I super enjoy where it's at and the community and the discord you know where things have become and I wouldn't trade it for anything some highs and lows I think the highs is just, you know, meeting people in person that I've met through the channel. I think that's always going to be the high for me is the connection that I've made, the people I've got to play golf with. Um, personally, I don't think there are lows. I think the lows for everyone that tries to make content is obviously the burnout. Sometimes I'm just like, I'm over it. I don't want to post. And it will, con it will come in the form of me saying, yeah, I'm taking a break. That's how you know that's like kind of a low point, but it's not like super detrimental to my health because I really don't focus on the numbers. If I did, the amount of effort that I put into my videos and the amount of views that I get is probably would make some people pretty upset because <laughs> I put a lot of work. Like all the videos that I, you know, edit take like eight hours plus just the editing part. Okay. It takes like eight hours plus because obviously I'm spending like four and a half hours for the round. And then I have to edit the shot tracers, edit up all the graphics, edit up all the maps, and then put it all together. So putting it all together in Final Cut Pro probably takes like a day or a half day at least. And yeah, I'm putting like another part-time job into, into this, you know, to make this channel keep going. And yeah, the numbers aren't there, but I don't really care. I just, like I said, the highs are when I get to meet people through the community and 
uh, yeah, just hang out with like-minded golfers and, you know, just chill. That's pretty much all I had for this particular podcast. There may be more podcast stuff in the future. I might feature some of the people that are on G Triple P and follow up with them and ask them how things are going. Uh, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoy that one. Keep chasing. We'll see you in the next one.